So there, there we have a cool display right here, the SID Display Week. And uh, hi, so who are you? I'm Michael Lee. And uh, what are we looking at here? This is a very special display. This is an extremely special display. It's a 1080p, 0.7 diagonal, high brightness micro LED display with an 8 micron pitch, 6 micron pixels. So um, we're here with Plessy. That's right. And uh, you are, are you the micro LED leader? Everybody's talking about micro LED. Yeah. So what do you do with micro LED? Here's our big advantage. Our advantage centers around the fact that we make these displays monolithically. So on a wafer, which I'll show you a picture of, all the displays are on one wafer as opposed to trying to make individual LEDs and transfer them to a substrate or to a wafer for that for, to manufacture the display. This allows us to go to sizes that are below 10 micron. Our leadership is focused on the ability to go into the sub 10 micron space in our pixel design. So this is a perfect for the uh, for this like heads up display micro mic, uh, like uh, heads up displays for augmented reality, yeah, and virtual reality. That's that's the market, and so we'll be able to go down to and we continue. We can go down to all the way down to one micron if we wanted to, right? And we're targeting and we have uh, customers, OEM customers that we're building for. One of them is Vuzix, who's here with me today. And we're building uh, micro displays for their uh, AR headsets, for their Blades uh, AR headsets. And we continue to just focus on that market because that's where our biggest advantage is over any competitors who are trying to do transfer of micro LEDs to a substrate or to a backplane. So you're not transferring? No transfer. And so how many people, this is the craziest thing, this is true. So many people come up and go, what's your transfer process? All day long, that's the people people come and ask. And so, literally, our displays are made like a whole die on a uh, semiconductor wafer. And just cut them out? And, well, that's quite simplistic, so we cut them out. Yeah, we just cut them out and throw them away. No. <laughs> <laughs> so what we have to do, and what the big, uh, the big I think, uh, uh, eureka moment here is for us, is that we have to bond these to a, um, a, a matching backplane to drive the individual pixels, which means that the tolerances, you can imagine if you got a, here we have a six micron pixel that then has to match up with a six micron backplane, but that literally those connections, all right, or those bump connections are one micron in size. So they can't even be out of alignment more than a half a micron. That has been our big breakthrough. So what you're looking at here are two million pixels, all aligned with a, with a matching backplane that we can drive like your a normal TFT, like a normal display system. Two million pixels and 0.7 inch? Well, how do you at, at, at 0.7 inch diagonal, right? And, this and is 1080p. In, this is in low brightness mode right now. Can we speed, speed up the brightness even more? Can you sure your camera can handle it? Let's try. How bright does it go? A lot how bright brighter. do you oh. want it? Oh. Exactly. It goes a lot brighter than this, too. Yeah. And so why it has to be bright is because when you're using an augmented reality headset, which you can, is transparent, and you're using it outdoors, you don't want to have to fight against the ambient light to see the image. So we want to be able to drive it harder uh, when you're in conditions where there's brightness or you're high brightness outdoors, you know, those kinds of, kinds of situations. So 0.7 1080p, what is it dots per inch, or what do you call it, PPI, or? What is it? What is a PPI? Wait, it's in? It's, it's uh, a pixel thousand. burn. Pixel burn? So, so it's no, 1920. Well, Three thousand PPI. Three thousand PPI. Yes. That's cr that's very high for the yeah. industry. Yes. Yeah, that's, that's the one highest. One of the leaders. Yeah, this is Le this is the highest. And the whole reason is because we don't have to move each one of these individual pixels to make it work. We make the whole thing in one die, one design. So uh, you'll have a wafer, and there'll be a bunch of them in, in the wafer. Yeah, I think we should carry around more wafers as examples. But behind a uh, uh, waste in here, you can see an example yeah. of, a, of a photo, let's say, of yeah. our wafers, right? And this is exactly where this die came from, as a matter of fact. That, there's your 0.7 inch diagonal, 1080p, nice. 6 micron pixel wafer. And the point to make here is they transfer this process an entire wafer at a time. So it's not one LED pick in place like some of the competition. This is multiple displays and mass 
boom. Right, and, and manufacturable, function. which right. makes it manufacturable. That's the other thing. So having a transfer process makes it very, very difficult to actually manufacture the thing. So in our case, it makes it something that's going to go into production in mass, we believe, right, right? in the future. How do, you, how do you make this? How does it work? Um, so, well, what we have here is the world's first wafer level bonded micro display. See, this can only be done with the Ganon silicon technology, and this is only possible because our Epi wafer, we can grow them and make them very flat. And when these wafers, very flat wafers, we then combine them with the CMOS backplane, and that's how you can bond them. So, we I think this is a big breakthrough and you know, it shows that there's a manufacturable way to, to make these displays. So it's a GAN on silicon, what is this? Um, so GAN on silicon is a competing technology. The conventional incumbent technology is GAN on sapphire. There are severe limitations for GAN on sapphire. The wafer bowl is quite high, they are not able to do wafer level bonding. So, but we get on silicon um, is something that Plessy has been working on for the close to the past eight years, and we have perfected the Epi technology, and we can make the wafers very high quality and very flat, and that is the requirements to do the wafer level bond. Right, we have a process of. So this is perfect for micro displays. It's yes. only for micro displays. It's only for micro displays. That's You're our making application. Making a big TV. And we wouldn't want to do that because then we're competing against, uh, you know, incumbent technologies like OLED, et cetera, where this really, really allows us to ha have a benefit is getting down the small sizes, but then also achieving extreme levels of efficiency, which means you don't have to have a tethered headset. We're talking about something that can be driven from battery, such as in the Vuzix blades that we're using, that we're, there, that we're enabling. So the, the, the Vuzix blade looks awesome and really fantastic, but this is you getting into how much more brightness, it's and you, you announced this in a press release, right? Yes, it's that you're gonna be in the next gen, maybe. It should be significantly brighter than even the blade is currently. But the big win here is if you look at the display engine inside the blade today, it has a front lit DMD from Texas Instruments actually, and behind it there's a flashlight full of LEDs. So it's this big box that's literally maybe this wide. This I mean, long. you make it small, but it's big. It is. It's, it's large. It, and when you put it on a headset, it's large. Yeah. Yes. But it's the, still, it's the coolest, slimmest pair of smart glasses out there today. Imagine shrinking that down to 20% of the size of it. So the side of the blade now is going to shrink right up and look like a pair of Kingsman-style glasses. That's the ultimate goal and the reason why we appreciate Plessy's efforts. You don't need separate LEDs to drive a front-lit display anymore. Everything's monolithic. It's in one part. And the lens now, the projection lens, can be this tiny thing the size of an eraser that goes right up against the display. So we're working on versions of this that are much smaller than this 0.7, actually. It's like a quarter inch. Yeah. So you can imagine a quarter inch display with this little tiny lens sitting on the end of it almost disappear in these glasses. Yeah. That's something, the ultimate goal. That's sociably acceptable pair of glasses that you can wear anywhere and you can uh, basically you know, use and have peripheral vision and everything included yeah. in it. So you're the world leader in smart glasses, right? Yes, we are. And. Uh, so you know, why, do you, why do you go over? I to, love that man. Why, why do you go over and work with Plessy? It's just leading class of. Because, well, yeah, because we're trying to make the next generation these even smaller and even more, uh, uh, you know, socially acceptable. Something just like a pair of glasses you can put on your head, as opposed to wearing something clunky that uh, has a lot of weight, that uses a lot of power, that runs really hot. So something, the smaller one loses less power. Less power, and uh, more efficient. The other thing is they have a process that proves it can be done in a monolithic fashion. You can make an entire display on a piece of silicon, do this, you got to call it bonding process, where it just yeah. moves it over to another CMOS part that's got the backplane on it, and this works. And everybody else is trying to figure out how to make color, or they're trying to figure out how to transfer the LEDs, or mm -hmm. there's lots and lots of problems. I, I really believe Plessy is further ahead than most folks at having solved the issues associated with making monolithic micro-LED displays. I guarantee you that we're ahead of all folks. There's like, no, nobody else is doing this because they all are investing in transfer technologies. So, so we're, we're yeah, right we now. are the leader, that's it. this transfer, uh, what do you call, not, not transfer, sorry, bonding, bonding to the CMOS, what, is, what does that involve? Um, so, all right, so we have a proprietary process here which involves a metal and oxide bond. Um, so 
we have also a CMP process to play, to planarize both wafers and then we bond the LED wafer with the back plate. So you bond uh, this stuff with the CMOS? That's right. And what does the CMOS do? Uh, so the CMOS is used to drive the LEDs and that's how we get our it's a active matrix back plane. This, this is just a bunch of LEDs right here? Yes. A bunch of micro LEDs and then you need something to trigger them? That's right. And the, the CMOS back plane looks almost like this. If you saw a CMOS wafer, you, you would see it. it would look this same little city of buildings is what this looks like, right? Yeah, it's also right. another wafer. It's another wafer. It's another wafer. And that's what's like. They register to each other in this bonding process. They have registration marks, and they can do the entire wafer at once. But isn't it a, a big challenge to align both things perfectly uh, right? Yes, that's the most difficult part. And one of the requirements in order to do so is to, both wafers must be really flat because you know, we're talking about eight microns here, the pixel pitch. And when both wafers are really flat, that's how it's only possible. And you have a system to just automate that or somehow you get it done? Well, we have developed a process to ensure that both wafers are truly flat and then to bond them. So um, the, this, you've been working towards this dream for a long time, right? To get to the ultimate AR dream, right? And this is gonna help. Well, this is a big step in the right direction. There's lots of electronics that are shrinking in size. Silicon gets smaller and smaller, et cetera, et cetera. But the display and the optics are the two hardest parts to make an AR display system that looks like people would wear. And I gotta say, there's lots of products out there today and not many of them are being successful, if any, because you do look like you just stepped off the Starship Enterprise when you put them on. Once that problem is fixed, socially acceptable, these things are going to fly off the shelves because they offer and do so much for the user. So there's no waveguide, it's just a lens looking directly at the display? Well, you need both. So you have to have a waveguide, yeah. yeah. Ultimately, you still got to do this pupil expansion where you take this little tiny image that comes out of this little tiny lens and expand it to put it out in front of you and float it in space. And Vuzix is an expert on waveguides. We have our own manufacturing facilities, et cetera. We have surface relief grading versions and we have holographic versions of waveguides, et cetera. We're not experts at display. Right, so that's why the relationship works so well, because we can match our display technology with your waveguide technology. And that coupling of those two optical capabilities is what allows us to unlock the you know, Kingsman style glasses. Right. Yeah. Everybody's gonna be wearing those? I think everybody's going to be wearing them. For one, you know, if you want to be get, get into that, it's basically like, aren't, aren't you guys getting a little bit sick of reading about people looking at their phones and crashing into each other on the, on, on the roads? I mean, it's a bit ridiculous, right? So this is something that unlocks that, that allows you to have that information at your, at your fingertips. Another thing is just information that you're getting, not just think about maps, but any kind of information you're getting in all different kinds of scenarios that you want to, that empower you. So it doesn't have to be this, hugely deep augmented reality. It's just getting information to your eye that you need to enable what you're doing. No, but these glasses do have location aware capabilities, right? Yeah. They can use the GPS and the phone or in the glasses. Yeah. And so when you're looking in a particular direction, for instance, Yelp runs on our blade today. I can use it on the street in San Francisco. I walk down the street and the restaurants come up with their names. If they're behind the wall, I can get their Yelp scores and everything and it's location aware content, meaning it's, it's related to the directions that I'm looking in. Yeah, cool. And here we say uh, red, green, and blue. This one is blue. You can do all colors? Yep, we can do all colors individually. How Absolutely. does that work? So it's just a, like a, you so, have all three in there? Yeah, so our, on green, right, so, so this is done with our gallium nitride on silicon or GAN on silicon process, right, in blue. Uh, but we can also do the exact same methodology for green. In the case of red, we use color conversion in, with quantum dot material. So we convert blue photons to red in that process. But can you have all three in one? So we we'll have to choose one color in the device. No, so there's some things we can't uh, basically tell you in regards to how we make all three colors work in the same projection system, but we are also working toward having all three of the same individual dye. So that's the next phase of our, of our uh, technology. So next year, when you come back to display week, to SID, that's what we'll be showing. Except it it'll be a quarter inch in size. Touché. Any chance you can speed things up? Like some people come and like uh, the huge investments or something like that? More investment, yeah. So we continue looking for more investment. But 
our big advantage is that we have our own factory, we have our own fab. So we're able to, instead of outsource all these processes, we're able to get very, very quick iterations and development to come out with those products. That is a big advantage I think we have over anyone else in the, in the market. That, that's what's allowed us to get to this place where we are today. And where's your fab? In England. In the UK? In the UK, yeah. Nice. In Plymouth, Devon, England. Right where your headquarters is. That's, <laughs> our headquarters sits on top. It is our headquarters, yes. Cool. Absolutely. Yeah. All right, so looking forward to this future, even more AR solutions. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be cool.